Amen. Any other questions? Who else has a question? Okay, we got a hand here, and then my sister here. Uh, a friend of mine has is, is, um, come to me with uh, the view of the Trinity, Trinitarian uh, view of the watch which we have in the SDA Church now, says it's contrary to what our pioneers believed. Mm -hmm. What is the, I'm still working on it, but uh, what's the yeah. true, true position of uh, the Trinitarian position? Quoting people like Froome, yep. yeah, who, who used, who was uh, one of us, um, but quoted outside sources and then linking them to spirit of prophecy and then coming out with the Trinitarian doc doctrine. Of course. Well, number one, the first thing that we would have to remember is this. The word Trinity does not mean what a lot of people say it means. That's, that's the first point. In other words, when a lot of people hear the word Trinity, we often think, uh-oh, Roman Catholicism, and there's a hierarchy and all of this other stuff where God's over here, the Son is over here, and the Spirit of God is this, that, and the other. But the word Trinity simply means a group of three. That's what the word Trinity means simply by definition, a group of three, okay? So that's point number one that I want them to understand, is did our pioneers and did Ellen White herself acknowledge three eternal persons. Did they acknowledge Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? That would be the first point. And the answer is yes. Then secondly, I would say, how are you going to use the spirit of prophecy to try to disprove it when evangelism page 616 clearly says the Holy Spirit is a person with a personality? So I'm like, you can't get away from that because the anti-Trinitarian movement, they're not simply against the name, they're against the concept. And they believe that the Holy Spirit is not a person or a being, but more so a force or an energy that exudes from Christ or the Father. But if they're using Ellen White, I just ask them, then what are you going to do with Evangelism 616? Evangelism 616 clearly says the Holy Spirit is a person with a personality. That is a clear, direct statement. So for me, that shuts it down as far as Ellen White is concerned. The Bible. In Acts chapter 5, one minute. They come together in Acts the fifth chapter, and they're talking to Ananias and Sapphira. Verse 4 says, you have not lied unto men, but unto God. Verse 5 says, you have lied unto the Holy Spirit. So the Bible acknowledges the Holy Spirit as God. So when I look at the evidence, I then begin to say, I don't think you're looking at it balanced. Fourthly, I also consider what the pioneers did say versus what they didn't. If you look back at Froome, you can look at James White, you can look at several of our pioneers. They did speak against the Trinity, but it wasn't the concept of simply the word, a group of three. There was a principle of the Trinity. What was popularly believed in those days was that God was one being that manifested himself in three ways. And this was referred to as the Trinity. You can look at certain Pentecostal groups and apostolic groups, and they still believe that today. They actually believe that Jesus is the Father, he is the Son, and then he's also the Holy Spirit. Well, that is error. That is completely unbiblical, and you can use the baptism of Christ in Matthew 3 to disprove that. Jesus is in the water, the Spirit of God comes upon him like a dove, and a voice from heaven says, this is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. There were three. So I don't know how people can say Jesus is all of them at the same time. So when the pioneers were speaking against it, what I would challenge them to do is go back to the pioneers and look at not so much what they said in word, but what they understood in concept. They were not against the fact that there was God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, but it was more so that they were against the idea of one being being manifested in three ways. And that is what I kept seeing when I finally said, let me look up what the writers were saying. Not just the fact that they just said the devilish doctrine of the Trinity, but more so what made it devilish? That to me, from what I've seen, when I listen to Audioverse or whatever, these, these organizations where people have preached on it, that's what I don't see. I don't see them qualifying what the pioneers were actually against. Were they against the word or were they against a concept connected with the word? And that for me has been the issue that kind of sealed it. Because when I went to Australia, I literally had anti-Trinitarians like surrounding me. I felt like a kid in a school fight. Literally, it's just like, you know, everybody was surrounding me and waiting outside for me. And I was just like, okay. And I, I, they started coming, well, what about this? What about that? Because the anti-Trinitarian movement was very, very large in uh, Australia when I was there. And we just started going by it step by step, point by point. And as we did it, 
they got mad. They, you know, they just started getting mad. It, it turned into a bad situation. One of them tried to get a little violent, but God delivered me from it. And it was, no, seriously, I, I, I was standing right here, and I was going through my Bible, and I was going through it point by point, and the guy started talking over me. So even when I'm talking, he's talking over me, and I said, well, I guess if you're not going to listen to me, then our study's over. So then I put my Bible in my bag, and then he went to my bag, reached in my bag, and said, you will listen to me. And he stuck his hand in my bag. Now, in my mind, I was going through a battle because I'm like, okay, if I try to stop him, this is not going to look right and so on. So, Lord, help me. And you ever heard of the, you ever heard of the Samoans? You know the Samoan brethren? And the Samoans are kind of healthy. They're big. <laughs> there was a Samoan brother sitting right there. And when that man reached in my bag, that Samoan brother looked at him. And he got up. And he picked that brother up in a bear hug. Literally wrapped him up. The guy was like this. <laughs> wrapped him up. Carried him to the door and said, get out of here and leave that man alone. And I said, well, praise the Lord. The Lord sent an angel. <laughs> you know, I was like, praise God. I'll take it. So the Lord delivered. So I was like, amen. So, you know, again, there are times, you know, there are two points on the pioneers. Number one, they were growing in understanding. Our pioneers used to be, believe in a 25-20, and they got to a point they didn't advocate it anymore. Our pioneers used to believe, uh, you know, that the Sabbath started at 6 o'clock, and then they got to an understanding that was broader. Our pioneers used to go ahead and say, oh, the Godhead thing is not true, and then later on they progressed. It was progressive for our brethren. We should not build our doctrines strictly off of what the pioneers believed. The pioneers were very much subject to error, and we need to stop treating them like they weren't, especially William Miller. I don't even understand how... That 2520 thing, I'm telling you, because it, it, it's just, why are we literally building, it seems, our teachings off of what pioneers taught? And our pioneers were very progressive and growing. So when I really talk with my brothers and sisters from the anti-Trinitarian movement, I'm just like, look, you know, do you believe the Bible? Do you believe the spirit of prophecy? Do you accept what it says? They try to say that Evangelism 616 was manipulated. My problem with that is if you're saying evangelism was manipulated or the writings of Ellen White, then how do we know what wasn't manipulated? So now what you're doing is you're putting me in a world that Satan would love, which is now I can't trust the writings anymore. So there's traps upon traps that a lot of these movements set up. I believe if God can show Ellen White that a little girl stole her bonnet, then God can help Ellen White know if somebody manipulated the writings. You understand that? So that's, that's the position that I hold on it. I have a great study on it that I'll send you if you, you know, we can exchange email, and I'll send you a whole thing. It is one of the most thorough studies. The brother that was in Australia, and to me, he did one of the most thorough studies on the so-called uh, anti, or the anti-Trinitarian movement, and he made it really plain. So I'll be happy to send that to you. I'll send you all the notes on it. All right. So 